All righty. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning. This is not live, by the way. So for my replay crew, you're all the replay crew. Anyways, this is going to be a di- little bit different report. Um, I wanted to do something different this morning. I was inspired by a few things I read on Facebook. And I want to talk about, you know, we, we, you, you sit there and watch YouTubers and sit there and they'll say, well, avoid the Northeast because of the tolls or avoid Texas because of the rates or avoid the West Coast because of the fuel. And that's all fine and dandy, you know, and, and we just came from a market that anybody can make money. You could throw a rock in any direction and you would make money. You can literally book as the forklift is in your trailer unloading you and you'd be good to go. Nowadays, that's a more challenging position and booking at the last minute, you know, you could sit there and say, well, you know, never book at the last minute, you know, always book ahead. Well, sometimes you don't have that option. Sometimes you don't have the option to not go to Texas. Sometimes you don't have the option to not go to the Northeast. Sometimes you don't have the option to not go to the West Coast. And so what separates a lot of people is how do you handle when you are in a negative situation? And so you have to focus on that. You know, you can sit there and we can tell you all day long, you know, stay in these green states here, stay in these greens. But, you know, with the holiday coming up, you might want to do some long miles because you're going to lose a day. A lot of places won't unload you or load you on Monday, Labor Day. And so it's easy to go, well, you know, if all you run is Ohio to Illinois and back, then, yeah, you're you're probably going to be sitting, but you need to make money. You need to roll. So you're going to find yourself up in the Northeast, or you're going to find yourself down in Florida, or you're going to find yourself down in Cali. You know, maybe you live in Florida, so you have no choice but to utilize that market and how do you handle it. Maybe you live in Montana and you have to have different strategies for, for where you live here. Um, you know, I live here in Missouri, a great freight lane. You know, so let's uh, let's go to Van here. And, uh, you know, a lot of times if I want to go through the house, I either got to go from here, I either got to deliver here, or I got to deliver here in this area. Then I know a person that, you know, lives in this area, and he does nothing but back and forth that way. And so it's just, you know, but, you know, sometimes you got that good pan load that goes to Wyoming. Sometimes you got that good pan load that goes to Oregon. Sometimes you got the good load pan load that's going to go up to Maine, right? And and so when you hear somebody go, well, you know, stay out of the Northeast or stay out of Texas or stay out of California, you know, that they're telling you what you can't do. They're telling you what you shouldn't do, and they're not giving you solutions. So I'll give you a story. So when I first started in the spot market, I was, you know, when you're sitting at home and you're comfortable, you're hanging out with your, your wife and kids and you're not sitting empty at a truck stop, it's real easy to be picky, especially when your costs are low, to get out of the house. And I was being extra picky. And then when the market started to drop back in uh, 2019, I found myself having trouble getting out of the house. I, had, I found myself not being motivated because the money just wasn't there. And I realized that, you know, you know, all my friends, stay out of Dallas. Why do you go to Dallas? Stay out of Dallas. Texas sucks, you know, that kind of thing. And I thought, well, what do people that live in Dallas do? And why is the Dallas market significant? Well, because at the time, since I wasn't booking ahead, about the best paying loads coming out of here, we're going to Dallas. You know, I can make $1,500 if I go to Dallas versus, 
you know, which is only like less than 400 miles, but, you know, or I can make, you know, 14 to go to Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, and, and that's a two day trip, two day transit. So I realized that if I wanted to get out of the house, I needed to go in any direction I, I, you know, I, I needed to have more options than just going to Ohio because at one point the Ohio market dropped and it kind of threw me for a loop. You know, what do you do when your normal market drops? And that's what causes a lot of people, um, grief. You know, when, when I was at Schneider doing the IC program there, you had a lot of people that ran the same stuff over and over and over. And then one day that, that company, uh, just decided not to have Schneider anymore. And so now all these people that literally made their truck payments for a full year based off these two or three customers, now suddenly they found themselves having to look at the low board on a wider spectrum. And they struggled a little bit because it turned them, it turned them complacent. And I was guilty of that. I was guilty of complacency. So back to my Dallas story. So I was uh, sitting there realizing that if I wanted to come out of the house, that I needed to utilize the Dallas market. So how did I do that? So here's what I did. I called a buddy of mine that has his own authority that lives in Dallas, Texas. And he's a, he's a good friend of mine, Big Rob, if you're watching. Shout out to you. And he's the one that introduced me to Jeffrey Like. He's the, the one that introduced me to uh, Schneider. And he was at Landstar with me, helping me out there too. He's been a good friend. So I called him. I said, dude, how, how, do, you, how do you utilize the Dallas market? And he was like, well, here's what I do, Steve. I take that hit coming out of Dallas, going up to Missouri or Kansas. And then I go to Ohio from there. And then I bounce from Ohio to Illinois. And then I bounce down back to Ohio. And then I take the long one from Ohio to Dallas, get that big pay and load. And then I go home. I'm usually home on Saturday. And, you know, and he told me how much he was making a week doing that. And he said something that was pretty profound. He goes, now when I leave Dallas and I see all these trucks sitting at the truck stop waiting for that two and a quarter, you know, back then, two and a quarter was good. That's how old we are. Um, he wouldn't like, while they're sitting there waiting for the high paying freight, sitting in that truck stop empty, I'm waving at him with this lower rate than I'm taking because I'm moving. Hurry up and get the hell out. And so being forced, so the whole whole point of the story is, is is being forced to utilize his market. He managed to thrive. You know, the guy paid off his truck. I mean, the guy the guy's pretty smart dude. And so I realized that I could do kind of the same thing. Take a load into Dallas and then bounce around like he did. Except I would change it up a little bit. I would I would go from Ohio to uh Oklahoma, because for me, the Tulsa market taps you into the Joplin market. Oklahoma City market taps you into um, Dallas area if there's nothing coming out of Oak City. And then he said, I'm not afraid of deadhead either. I mean, I'm not going to deadhead out of Dallas. That's insane when I can get at least something. But it's a shorty. And so... You know, we always say, don't go to Denver unless you're getting it going in. Well, if you have the same mindset that, you know, I'm only leaving, I'm not moving this truck for less than X amount per mile, well, then you would never leave Denver. You would never leave Miami. You would never leave Dallas, Texas. Because that that is what... Um, that's what you have to do. So think about that. 
as you're looking at these markets and realizing that you might have to do something that you're not wanting to do, or you might have to do something that people tell you not to do. You know, you might have someone that goes, well, I, I don't do multiple stops. And then you later find out that they're doing nothing but multiple stops. They didn't want you in on their, uh, on their, uh, cheese there. And The, the, so it, it, it's, it's, it's something to think about because it's, it's easy for someone high and mighty to sit there and tell you not to do this, not to do that, but you want to learn from their experience. And so, so instead of saying, Hey, don't go to Dallas, find the person that has to utilize Dallas and how do they utilize that? How do they do that? How do they, how do they adapt and overcome? Because I'll tell you. When I was running my normal area, which is Ohio, um, it dried up at one point. And, uh, you know, the, the local brokers kind of, you know, told me what was going on. And, and you know, the things that I read in the news, it made a lot of sense. It had something to do with the farmers and the crops, you know, not being able to be planted. And, you know, this, again, this was a couple of years ago. And it made sense. So, you know, the, so, you know, what do you do if you go to Jacksonville? What do you do if you go to Dallas? What do you do if you end up in Salt Lake City, Utah? And that's where these tools, you know, come in handy. You know, if you take a big pay and load and it gives you leverage, right? You know, someone has a load, say, from Wisconsin, Montana. Number one, expect the dead head out. And so... When you quote a rate that goes to Montana, make sure that you're getting the rate and then you guesstimate by using the tools of what's coming out of Montana or Wyoming, you know, expand your radius of deadhead or include the deadhead and make sure that that's a profitable rate. Now, you're not going to get round trip money, but you're going to get something. And then that's where it's important to book ahead. But I guarantee if you're doing Wisconsin, Montana, you've got a little bit of time to book ahead. But then people are like, well, you know, you always got to book ahead. Well, what if you don't? What if you can't? You know, I was in a situation on Friday where I wasn't sure if the truck was going to get empty or not. So I didn't want to book ahead. And then booking the last minute killed us. And and sometimes you're just, sometimes you just got to take the lumps. Sometimes you got to be flexible, you know, but now, you know, once I can get everybody booked ahead, then it's a lot less stressful. I'm not fighting as much. It's not as critical. You know, it, it's, it's when that load cancels at the last minute or you show up at the shipper and they're like, we don't have a load for you. Uh, go talk to your dispatcher or broker. And then you, um, uh, you know, now you're forced to book at the last minute. And that usually means you're going to pick up something that no one else wanted. Because the odds of you finding that load that someone else fall, fell off of is, is, is very low. It's very slim. And if you, if you do nothing but wait for those loads, you're going to be sitting a lot. Well, sitting costs money. You're either idling or using your APU. Um, you're eating you're using your resources and you're not making any money. So, you know, these are the things that you, you want to consider, you know, you got to think outside the box. Am I telling you you go to California when you don't want to? No, but if you find yourself doing something that you're normally not used to, or you don't want to do, then, then, uh, you know, how do you handle that? So let's let's go over the low boards here. This is for Van. This is uh, the density map. This is showing you the hottest areas. Green is good on this particular map. And red is not so good. It's not undoable, but it's not great. If you're running in these red states, expect lower rates coming out of them. And... If you're running the green states, expect a little bit simplicity of, of being able to book. 
um, you might have 400 loads in a 150 mile radius versus here you might have 50. And be aware of multiple postings. A lot of brokers do that. Um, there are brokers that will post, like let's say they got a load that goes from Green Bay, Wisconsin to St. Louis, Missouri. They might be under 20 different cities within a 40 mile radius of Green Bay. They might list it 40 times. And, and so that can kind of uh, skew the low counts. It also skews the, the, uh, the rate per mile on the, the, you know, the, the average tools, right? So you might look at the rate and say, well, you know, the average rate is, is $1,000 to move this load for, you know, 350 miles. But then when you call the broker and it's actually 400 miles, well, then now that skews that, that, the average rate. So you really got to know, you got to have a calculator in the hand and you got, you, you got to know your numbers, right? Um, and you got to be quick on the fly, you know, having a second device where you can look at Google maps real quick and, um, you know, make decisions on the fly because, with the way the market is now, any any hesitation, any hey, let me call you back after I think about this, it, the, that load's going to be gone, or they're not going to answer the phone. You know, a lot of people complain about the email only, and I actually kind of like like that because once they email you, I can kind of do the math and everything, and 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 look at the actual cities, and then you know um, make my decision, and. The other element to that is if, you know, you, you need to learn to recognize the brokers that do that, you know, that will put multiple postings, multiple cities for one load. And, you know, and, and there, there are times when they do have 10 of these loads. They've, they created a contract. You know, a shipper like Coca-Cola might have 10 of these loads going from St. Louis to Green Bay. And, and so, you know, you, 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 every now and then you'll call, yeah, I've got two of these left. And they always the term left because they want you to think that you're, you know, they want to use your fear of missing out against you. So try not to let FOMO, you know, get the best of you. And then they'll tell you, you know, we're moving these all day, every day for, you know, a thousand and you want 1500 and then you, you can do one of two things. You can negotiate up or you can tell them, well, thanks. You know, if anything changes, give me a call. And if they're desperate to move, they will call you. If not, somebody else will take it for that rate that you don't want to take it for, which is, which is what's going on right now. A lot of people are taking, um, cheaper rates because they got to keep moving. And maybe they have that mindset that I was talking about earlier about, you know what, they'll move that truck while laughing at you sitting at the truck stop waiting for that big paying load. And yes, you got to know your worth. You got to know your numbers. But sometimes you got to be the king of misfits. Sometimes you got to you know, take what's, what's the best take, take, you know, what's, what's the best crap sandwich that I could take because that's all that's left. And that's what the situation you find yourself when you're booking at the last minute. Like I said, you could be the best budgeter. You can be the best, uh, load planner. You could always be one or two or three loads ahead, which I don't recommend going above a week on being ahead because so many things are going wrong. A lot of shippers are canceling orders. A lot of receivers are having trouble finding room for this stuff, which is why volumes are down. And, and you might show up in a place that usually takes an hour to unload you is now six hours unload because they just simply don't have the room. Now, another thing that's been pointed out to me is rail. A lot of freight is going on the rail right now. A lot of the, a lot of the volume stuff, a lot of the stuff that has to go coast to coast is going on the rail. And that's another, one of the many reasons of why you're seeing volumes come down, but there's still money to be made. It's just how many do's and don'ts 
um, do you have in your vocabulary when looking at a low board? So if you like this video, uh, please hit like. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I try to do live and, and recorded morning reports about the spot market. This is the one, two, three low board. Uh, if you want to sign up for 30 days free and um, and have access to all the tools, you get 30 days free using my code 48065, and it will give you $20 off a month on all the tools um, that uh, are helpful. So, you know, if you look at, let's find loads here. Uh, there's There's a good search. So when you find a load, you click on it. it has all these uh, has all these tools. You can even do check calls to the load board if you have your own authority. Gives you a rate calculator, um, profit ca calculator. You know you can you can update status. You can save this load. You can share it. You can print it out. You can you can bid on it. And it gives you lane averages and everything else. So, um, and it updates automatically, like you just saw. It just added a load right there. So, 48065, go to 123 Low Board, find their website. The link's in the description. And uh, with that being said, I appreciate everybody single, every single person that watches. And um, until then, be safe, be good. Be profitable. Peace.